Good morning, as I'm sipping my coffee. My name is Danita Ruskowski. I'm the owner of Integrity Coding. I want to take some time and, and help you understand the digestive system coding. So if you can get your CPT books out, I want you to open up to the digestive system in the CPT book. It is the 40,000 series. And if you're in the 2019 book, I am beginning right at the index on page 297. I want you to remember something with medical coding. Medical coding has a, a rhythm and a rhyme to it. Your CPT books do. So I want to take a minute and I just want to point out something to you because when you just grasp these, these little milestones in coding, you'd be like, oh, okay, I see a pattern here. It does have a pattern. Follow it. So when you are on page 297 in the 2019 professional edition, it starts with the digestive system. Now notice the lettering in red are the anatomical sites that you're dealing in. The lettering in blue underneath it are the procedures that are done within that anatomical site. I want you to take just a minute before I start talking again, and I want you to look at these codes that are in red, the wording. What is the pattern that you see in this index? So just take a minute. So we have the lips, the vestibule of mouth, the tongue, dental alveola, alveolar, the palate and uvula, salivary glands, pharynx, esophagus. Stop for a minute. What's the pattern here? Digestion starts with the lips and the mouth. It then goes further in. We get to, so we have the lips, the mouth, the tongue, uh, dental alveola, the, the teeth structures, palate and uvula, salivary glands. Do you see it goes exactly the way there, that God did our anatomy. There is a pattern to it. They didn't just throw the codes in and say, I think that looks good, right? Also, look, look at, under, look at your parentheticals, look underneath the indented codes. For example, under lips, excision, repair, other procedures. Vestibular of mouth, excision, repair, incision, excision, repair, other procedures. For the most part, it follows the same pattern. There is an incision, excision, repair. Most of it, I'm, sorry, I'm not going to say all of it, but again, pattern, flow. I started learning this when becoming an instructor because my goal is how can I make it easy so that students can understand this? I want to make it easy for students so they can grasp it. Because as I just said in the last video, when, when students have a hard time with medical coding, because remember, it's a brand new language. It's like learning to walk and talk. They get very frustrated and they just, they give up. You can't give up because you can do it. I'm telling you, I was one of those students in middle school and high school. Now I grew up in the Boston area. We had remedial reading and you had to get taken out of the class and they may still do that now. I don't know, but I was one of those students and it's very easy to be, to get labeled like, oh, they learn or they're slow or no. People might learn differently, but they can learn. Make no mistake about that. Students that learn differently, that's just their pattern of learning. They're not any different, any less than anybody else. So when I learned medical coding, I was like, oh, it took me right back to all those years. Like, oh, I'm that student that just struggled, struggled, struggled. Well, yeah, you are if that's the way you're going to think. You can change the pattern. Or you can keep things the same. You know, there's a saying, nothing changes if nothing changes. And my goal, remember, I, I had a really high motivation to get my certification. I wanted to be able to impart and spend time with my grandchildren so that they weren't in somebody else's care all the time. So that motivated me. And the biggest mistake that I made, and if anybody of you watching this has done this, when I didn't pass my exam the first time, I waited a year before I went back. Don't ever, ever, ever 
do that. Take your exam right away. So anyway, there's a ebb and a flow, a pattern in coding. In every single chapter, you're going to see it. So I'm going to give you some notes. And there's a blank page in your 2019 book on page 296. So the first thing I want you to write down is the order of the digestive system. It comes from my very first coding book. I wrote down all my notes. Number one starts with the mouth. And unfortunately, this mouth has gotten me into trouble. <laughs> so anyway, digestion starts with the mouth. Number two. It can also get you out of trouble. So we should always watch the words that we say. Number two is the esophagus. Esophagus. Number three is the stomach. And I also have in parentheses, it can be called the cardia, C-A-R-D-I-A. -A. Number four, the duodenum. And this is my spelling. Hopefully it's right. D-U-O-D-E-N-U-M, duodenum. Number five is the jejunum. J-E-J-U-N-U-M, jejunum. Number six is the ilium. Don't forget, there's an ilium that has to do with the digestive system, and then there's an ilium that has to do with the hip and pelvic region. This is ilium having to do with the intestines. And I believe it's I-L-I-E-M, ilium. I know this one is with an E, ilium. Number seven is the cecum, C-E-C-U-M. Number eight is the ascending colon. Number nine is the transcending colon. Number 10 is the descending colon. Number 11 is the sigmoid colon. Number 12 is the rectum. And number 13 is the anus. Okay, so that is the digestive. If you want to entitle it something, I wrote down the order of the digestive system or the digestive process. The next notes I want to give you is that you have three accessory organs. You have your liver. Number two is your gallbladder. Number three is your pancreas. You have three small intestines, intestines. Number one is the duodenum. Number two is the jejunum. Number three is your ileum. You have five large intestine. One, two, three, four was number five. There it is, okay. Number one is the cecum. Number two is the ascending colon. Number three is the transverse colon. Number four is the descending colon. And number five is the sigmoid colon. When you begin to go through your codes, people ask me, do you, you know, all kinds of things to fear codes and highlight this and underline that. Yes, during our courses, we do go over that. 
the main point of integrity coding, yes, I teach the students your parent codes, your child codes. What word, what are your keywords in the code descriptor with, without? You always want to be able to ask yourself in the urinary system, say, for example, you're coding, you know, you're doing a scope procedure. You want to know when they talk about the scopes, is it talking about a rigid scope or a flexible? Those words need to stand out to you because it's going to drive your code. You also want to know, was it going through the mouth? Like, you know, your EGDs? Or was it going through your rectum? There are various scopes. Now, there's scope that is the instrument, S-C-O-P-E. That's the instrument. The actual, actual procedure, if it's an arthroscopic procedure, we'll, we'll call it an arthroscopy, an arthroscope. That is the method that they're using to perform this particular diagnostic or therapeutic procedure. So know the difference. We talk about when you're first beginning to, to learn when you're like, which code do I choose? Well, you want to ask yourself, what is the main procedure that they're doing here? Are they doing a duodenoscope? Are they doing a colonoscopy, a sigmoidoscopy? There's this picking out those keywords is it's what's going to drive your code, flexible or rigid. So, for example, let's open up our coding books. The 2019 book, they have a lot of great pitches this year. I really like them. I, I buy my books. I like the AAPC bundle pack. So I am on page 300 in the 2019. So it starts with digestive system. The first heading, the first anatomical site that we're under is lips. What are they doing within the lips? Everything that's in blue talks about the procedures that are done in or for the lip area. Are you doing an excision? Is it a repair? You then get into the mouth. Again, incision, excision, repair. Tongue, same headings. There's a flow. There's the pattern. Let's talk for a minute on page 303 under the pharynx, adenoids, and tonsils. For example, when you look at code, I'm going to change glasses here. Nope, my other one's on here. Never mind. When you look at procedure code, um, 42820, What's the main word there? Tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. It's not just doing one, it's both. It's a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. In this area of digestive system coding, these are age-driven codes. Number one, what you wanna ask yourself, what's the main procedure that they were doing? Tonsillectomy, adenoidectomy, was it a combination? And the age of the patient. The age is also going to drive your code. Was it 12 or younger or 12 and older? And you'll notice if you, if you start to review these codes here under the tonsils and adenoids, follows the same pattern. Age, is it the primary, the first time this was being done, or was it the second time that it's being done? So just stop for a minute and ask yourself what's being done. What's the age of the patient? Is it primary or secondary? Meaning first time, second time that they're going in to do this. If it does not state that it was the first time or second time, you would have to assume it's the first time. And there's not a lot of times in coding that you're going to assume things because the goal in coding is and the rule, if it's not documented, see this Italian hand? It's not documented. It didn't happen. So everything is driven by documentation. But there are those times if it doesn't stay primary or secondary, you have to assume it's the first time it's being done. OK, that's just a little bit of helpful hints in coding digestion. I hope you found it helpful. I'm going to leave some information here in the chat box. I'd love to hear the feedback. We have other videos up, by the way. We have some in cardiology. I think we have one in integumentary. Um, 
test taking tips. But if you're looking for a course, a coding course, we have our upcoming summer coding course. The cost is $50 for a 16 week course. Yes, you heard that right. 50, five zero. Students are responsible to also pay $35 on the 1st of August, September, October, and November, which is an additional $140. But again, it's $35 on the first of the month. We also offer 5% off of that if you pay your balance all up at front, all up at front, all up front. So I'm gonna leave you some information here in the chat, leave you our website. And the summer course is $50. Students are responsible for all books. I don't supply any of the books. You're responsible for your own AAPC practice exams. So students must purchase all those on their own. The goal is by the end of the 16 weeks that you can sit and take your national certification exam with AAPC, the best certification you can get to start off with, that is CPC. If you are preparing for the exam right now and you need a little boost and you need some test taking tools, we have a fantastic package of step-by-step -step coding guide sheets. And you can find that on integritycoding.com. Right in here as I talk. These are, I, I keep saying the word invaluable, but they're excellent. If you read the review, students love these guide sheets. We have them in evaluation and management integumentary, cardiology, female reproductive anesthesia. We have it, digestive is coming out this weekend. Uh, cardiology, the medicine section, part one. There's quite a few in there, but we also have uh, recordings. If you want a recording of the CPC prep, one of the boot camps that we did, we have that available. You can listen to that over and over and over again. So that we, there's a lot there, but if you want a live online course, attend our summer certification course. You won't be sorry. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, I'll leave you my email as well. And remember, don't quit. Keep pursuing that certification. It's one of the best things you'll be able to do for yourselves, your family, and to help other people meet their needs. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.